Good morning, everybody. This is Xenia Ferentini. And uh, we are going uh, to begin uh, this, uh, this webinar. You are supposed to look at my screen right now. Uh, this webinar is uh, hosted by the chapter, the Italian chapter of, uh, of Building Smart. And uh, the idea of this webinar is to report on some work that we have been uh, carrying out related to the application of uh, IFC uh, Bridge within uh, the Italian uh, community of uh, Building Smart. We have just completed the phase one of uh, this Italian project and uh, the objective of uh, this uh, webinar is to report on the outcomes of this, uh, of this phase. I am uh, Xenia Ferentini, I work for NGSIS and I'm also responsible within the Italian chapter of the standards uh, uh, program. The agenda for today is I will make actually a short introduction of uh, the um, of the of the work and i'll do it uh, after reviewing the webinar functionalities uh, so that uh, even though you know at the beginning you won't be able to uh, interact with us uh, too much we'll give you some time uh, by the end of the day so uh, at noon uh, for a question and answers uh, between me and the question of answers that will be the clue of the presentation which will be carried out by uh, raquel and uh, that will take around uh, uh, 45, uh, 45 minutes. Just uh, very quickly, the webinar functionalities. Uh, well, uh, first of all, uh, uh, this session is being recorded and it will be made available to whoever registered to the uh, event. Your audio is uh, by default uh, muted. And if you want to talk, you can request to speak by raising your hand. And uh, that's uh, uh, what you find on the right part of, the, the, of your screen on the functionalities. Uh, clearly, you have another way of interacting with us, which is uh, typing a question uh, on the bottom of the, of the screen, the bottom, bottom right. If we don't manage to answer your questions today, we will ensure to follow up afterwards with a, with a response. And that's because we will uh, unfortunately have only 15 minutes only to take care of the responses. You have a couple of uh, functionalities that you can use during the presentation, which is the Zoom functionality and the screenshot uh, functionalities. It's important that also on the... Um, handout section of your control panel, you have the two presentations made available to you right now. Uh, of course, you can always reach us via email at info at ebme.it. That said, I will probably go directly into the clue of the work that we are going, I'm going to introduce to you. So first of all, I'm very proud to, to show you the, uh, the work that we have been carrying out because it was a part of, uh, of course, a bigger, a, a bigger effort that the Italian, Italian chapter is uh, going through since the end of uh, 2018. The Italian chapter of Building Smart is uh, quite a young one because again, it has been uh, a year and a half that uh, we are uh, formed. And uh, from the end of 2018 till now, we have actually uh, tried to work hard to bring our contribution to the international community. Um, this work has been uh, rewarded, I need to say, and that's why I'm uh, proud of the wool community and the wool Italian community that I'm representing right now. As an example, we have several participants joining the last summit in China. We won, uh, the Italian uh, community won uh, two awards in 2018 and 2019. Uh, the number of uh, associates uh, has been uh, increased uh, lately. And we have organized uh, and attended uh, several events, both at the international level and the national levels. 
uh, we have a quite a good participation for a young chapter, chapter to the building smart uh, rooms. We have also technically contributed to the latest version of IFC, the for the free, uh, that has been uh, recently uh, also released uh, as a candidate standard on the public page of uh, Building Smart International. Also, as a chapter, uh, we participate to the professional certification program and we have started uh, certifying the first professionals within uh, the Italian, uh, of course, boundaries. And uh, we have also one software vendor that has uh, many software certified right now under the software certification program, the international one. Now, that's said that those are the accomplishments, but we know that there is still a long road uh, to, uh, to, to, to go through. And uh, uh, this is how we intend uh, as an Italian chapter uh, to, to face uh, this, uh, this longer road. We are organized in uh, programs. Here in Yellow, you see several programs. Right now we have a standard program, professional program, events program, and communication program. I'm responsible of one of them, the standards program. And under the standards program, we have several projects one of which is the IFC Bridge Italian Working Group. And that's within this context that the work that Raquel is going to show you has been carried out. Uh, the uh, objective of the IFC Bridge project. Well, first of all, uh, as you, some of you might know, uh, none of the uh, Italian, none of the Italian components participated into the IFC Bridge project itself. Uh, so the first objective uh, of the work was to understand what uh, had already been done and uh, how that uh, could be used uh, for some uh, cases uh, that are typical of uh, our Italian uh, bridge owners in this case. So we wanted to test the application of these standards, then understanding the gaps and how to fill the gaps. Sometimes you would see the gap means, uh, you know, and, uh, giving indications on how to use the standards because the standard may be too, too flexible and we wanted to provide indications. Sometimes uh, the standard uh, might uh, lack of uh, some concepts and our objective was to report to the international community the outcomes of this work. So uh, we initiated uh, this work, let's say, eight to ten months ago by defining the objectives that I've shown you in the previous slide. And I think that our greatest strength was to form a group uh, uh, that was that represented a mix of competences. Specifically, we had within our group some stakeholders that provided some case studies with universities that already had great IFC knowledge and deep insights on the IFC um, data, data representations. We had the uh, designers with the modeling knowledge. Uh, we had the software vendors who were ready to experiment. And we had some consultants that provided the methodology. Uh, once we initiated this group, uh, we took six months uh, to accomplish the results. Uh, and Raquel is going to show you basically the content uh, of what was produced in these six months. And right now, we are going through a dissemination activity. A dissemination activity means also a um, dialogue with the rest of the community, national and international. So uh, our idea is uh, first to report back to the BSI, so to the international community, the feedback. And that's why this webinar is held in uh, English. Um, the idea is also to have a report of issues and solutions that we, we found combine them with some national guidelines uh, that we will make public. And uh, this, this uh, reporting activity will happen uh, in the next few months. In the plan, uh, we have everything released by October of this year. Uh, also, we, had, uh, we have had uh, uh, some quite good communication with the French community, especially with the MIND uh, community. And uh, uh, we are exploring a, a collaboration or at least an exchange of ideas, exchange of experiences with, uh, with MIND. Uh, because we know that they have been working hard on uh, some concepts such as uh, the application of uh, uh, the BSDD, the data dictionary, 
at the international and national level and they've been working on some other uh, um, use cases and case studies. Uh, so I think that a bridge might be helpful to both the communities. Here you see the uh, list of uh, the great uh, companies, that well, companies and organizations that participated that in, uh, in this work. Again, I am uh, just representing uh, uh, them right now because most of the work was carried out by, by them. Uh, um, and again, uh, besides, of course, being the hard work, we also enjoyed the, the, the community that uh, we created. <laughs> Besides, of course, uh, the, the, the the professional uh, the professional uh, meetings uh, meetings themselves. Now it is with a great uh, pleasure that uh, I will give the word to to Raquel. Uh, Raquel is a PhD uh, candidate uh, student at the University of Padova. Uh, her research is uh, mostly related to uh, existing infrastructure and the application of uh, MIM methodology and uh, information uh, management and exchange over the, uh, for the management of uh, existing infrastructures, including, of course, uh, uh, bridges. And uh, the application with the, uh, through the existing standard is one of the topics that uh, she's facing during uh, her. Um, her PhD. Raquel, you are supposed to become the presenter right now. Yeah. Uh, are you? Sh are you? Uh, I'm. Sh I'm sharing now my screen. Proceed. Okay. Perfect. Good morning to everyone and thank you Xenia for the kind introduction. Uh, as Xenia says, I will present you the, the main part of our work that we have carried out in this uh, six months. Uh, starting from kind of repeating a little uh, which were our objectives uh, during this uh, month of, uh, of work. Uh, basically, uh, we start uh, analyzing the standard and trying to create, um, uh, we want to create a, a common uh, knowledge base between all the components and members of the work group and then the, the it, the, our interest was to uh, test the application of the standards to some of the bridge types that uh, were not uh, um, tested in the international by the international uh, project because uh, a lot of us know that basically uh, it was test on Girder Bridge uh, and then just to, to trying to really apply the, the standard in the in the practice, in the common practice of uh, design bridges, uh, but also on the all the, the project that uh, are carried out, and uh, trying to find some solution or a possible uh, addition and uh, proposing some some solution to the issues that uh, we we have found, and finally to report uh, what we what the the work and the results and the activities that we have done to our international community to the Italian community and to the professionals, but also uh, to the international uh, community. Basically, our, uh, our work can be divided in three uh, phases, let's say like that. A preliminary one, which was, uh, uh, as I said, uh, about uh, study and understanding the standard and uh, the, the project of IFC Bridge and all the uh, new entities and approach proposed. Then the, try to identify two significant case studies but also uh, use cases which are interest, which are of interest uh, for the Italian uh, community. Then there was a main phase, uh, the central phase, uh, related to the classification of the object and of the spatial structure to so identify the, the classes and the classification and organization based on the IFC standard. 
and then uh, a phase of modeling uh, the the two case studies related to them to their uh, use cases and uh, trying to map uh, all of this uh, all, to map the model towards the, the IFC standard and then uh, uh, last phase last phase of uh, reporting the issues that we have uh, documented during uh, the main phase in uh, creating reports and presentations and uh, uh, so describing our work in this uh, producing some documents that uh, could be available available for uh, the other the other people So uh, starting to, to explain you which, uh, which was uh, the first part. So uh, what we've done at first was study and understand the project. Uh, what we've done is using all the reports, uh, the presentation that the international community shared and also the uh, uh, international uh, articles that were published and so on, and try to create a, a common uh, knowledge between all the members of the the work group. We spend uh, uh, some some meetings uh, uh, to 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 work on this and uh, trying to to understand really what was the the approach uh, towards this uh, this project towards the IFC Bridge 4.2, and to uh, to understand which is the logic that uh, uh, was added for the was added for the uh, infrastructure asset in the standard. Uh, so, uh, what uh, uh, what was important for us is trying to find the key features uh, that uh, this project introduced in the uh, in the standard IFC. So basically, uh, what we take uh, uh, what we took in consideration was that uh, just few entities was new entities uh, were added, and that uh, it was uh, it was chosen to add just uh, to add a uh, new uh, anum or predefinite ties of what was said to the to the classes to the existing classes and uh, the the third thing thing that was uh, uh, really important is that uh, with the introduction of the bridges of the in the in the standard a new approach to the spatial organization of the of the information and of the object uh, it was introduced in the standard. So, uh, although we know that uh, in two days ago, or the uh, it is pub it was published the uh, IFC 4.3, but uh, uh, this work on the special structure is still important because of the approach and on the logic that. Uh, um, uh, this uh, w that was uh, introduced uh, with uh, the standard 4.2. And then, uh, as, I, as I still say, that uh, the, the standard was applied uh, basically on the Girder Bridge and tested basically on the Girder Bridge. So uh, we want to test uh, some other um, some other cases. And so uh, then we have a moment when, with the work group, uh, with the members of the work group, we try to find uh, two case studies, so two uh, types of bridges which are uh, widespread in our uh, Italian uh, scenario, uh, but uh, and there are common, but also we want to find uh, some use cases that are common. So uh, we want to really to to put the standards to uh, something that uh, is useful for the community for the members of the group but also for the um, all the, the the community that want to to work with the standards and on the beam application uh, the two case studies that we have choose are uh, an existing mastering arch bridge and uh, a still concrete slab bridge that is uh, to that is a uh, design to to construction. So uh, considering, as I said, the uh, the, the widespread types of the bridges in Italy, we have a lot of uh, mansory arch bridge, existing bridge. And so, and the, on the other side, uh, we have uh, the the Girder Bridge, which is uh, kind of uh, really common as the also the project uh, show in the phase in the first phase. 
uh, for both of the case studies, what we have done is kind of creating uh, modeling strategies to uh, to identify how we we will work with this uh, to with these two bridges and uh, uh, to create uh, the the use cases to define the use cases the use cases of the two bridges in particular for the Masarin arch bridge the case is basically the degradation analysis so what we want to do is kind of creating a model that can be used to identifying the, the to identify the condition of the asset itself and so to uh, um, create a model have a, a model that is useful to uh, describe the condition of the existing asset uh, and then uh, we all the results that uh, we've expected were to uh, create find the classification the correct classes representation for the complex uh, classes that uh, we uh, usually have for the uh, complex element and uh, uh, create and start to, to find the uh, possibilities to create relations between the beam object and the uh, uh, condition of this object inside and described thanks to the IFC standard. For the second uh, case study, for the second bridge, so the slab girder bridge, what we have done is, uh, uh, so the interest was to uh, have a model that is ready to the construction. So this means that we have a lot of number of elements and uh, it is a really detailed model uh, that, should, that should be uh, ready for the construction. Uh, here we use uh, uh, different software to approach on this modeling, but uh, we didn't want to compare the software uh, one with the other, but what we've done is just uh, seeing and uh, kind of testing the the approach uh, uh, of uh, the the software and uh, the approach the different approach that we can have uh, towards uh, a beam model and uh, an IFC standardization uh, we tested the free software and uh, uh, an important phase it was to uh, kind of compare the the IFC exported in terms of find common issues between them but not to compare the software itself uh, we want to specify that uh, in this first phase we didn't work on the alignment and on uh, the linear placement we know that it's really important but because of the amount of work related to uh, the organization of the project and uh, uh, so the classification of the object and all the occurrences uh, we are we kind of uh, postpone this uh, this work with the IFC align uh, alignment and I mean on the linear places placement in a second uh, in a second phase so we choose uh, according with uh, all of the member on the of the work group to focus more on the occurrences classification and on the structured structural and on the special structure uh, organization itself so uh the main part of classification going deeply into this uh, what we have done is so first of all create an IFC classification so especially because different software was were used and uh, so the approach of the of the members are different to, towards the modeling and to IFC export at first we create the IFC classification so uh, we work on the special structure the composition and uh, the on the classification of the object itself uh, and then uh, this was a phase that we really shares by uh, meeting face to face uh, uh, with all with part of the components and then uh, kind of uh, creating so this uh, common share knowledge of uh, IFC classification at first and then based on this so we went uh, towards the modeling of the object and then the final part was to 
test the export, I mean, testing the IFC export. Uh, although, yes, we know that uh, known software support the uh, IFC standard 4.2, but uh, we kind of try to, we try to manage uh, this part and uh, doing the tests and the IFC export, uh, although this. So what uh, we've done is for the first part of uh, IFC classification is using uh, two different uh, um, tools uh, kind of to uh, create uh, diagrams and spreadsheets in order to uh, classify all the elements, but also to show the relations between the objects in the, in the project. So uh, we, we want to, to show all of this, uh, this relation and what you've done is a, a kind of a, uh, to highlight in the diagrams and the spreadsheet that uh, the class, of course, of each element, but also the predefinite type and then uh, uh, the name, the name that normally we use uh, uh, in the the to to identify that the kind of uh, the object here. So we see an example for the uh, slab girder bridge or the diagram or the final diagram, uh, and uh, and here the a part of the spreadsheet that is uh, uh, that is used. So uh, at first, as I said, uh, we start from the spatial structure decomposition. We work uh, basically on the, of course, on the information that we have uh, in the in the website of Building Smart, but also uh, we, we we use the report. So at first it was a little bit difficult, for example, finding the definition uh, of some of the of the part because they are missed in the in the website. But we have the information in the report, so we try to manage all the information that we have using uh, all the shared documentation uh, by Building Smart International and by the IFC Bridge project. So the, the, the first part was the spatial structure, the composition. Uh, we kind of, we did this kind of uh, considering the use case of each model. So taking in consideration how the, the model um, will be used uh, uh, for his case studies and then uh, which uh, we consider also which are the owner uh, specifications and needs in terms of what information they need and how then they use it and uh, kind of they they will uh, with they will use the, the model and then uh, we consider also the common practice of the professionals of the designer but and of course also of the structure, structural engineer but trying to uh, apply an approach which is uh, close to a beam based uh, mod method and not to kind of uh, let that only the common practice uh, were, were used. So uh, the first, of course, uh, two parties, the easiest ones is to classify and to find the predefinite type for the IFC facilities. So uh, this is the first, uh, the easiest part, but uh, to create a common vocabulary between uh, IFC and uh, then the users, what we've done is kind of creating a document. So we have the uh, uh, images, uh, structural reference, and and uh, uh, notes about this that are uh, that uh, collect in a way the Italian and international literature related to bridges, but also we want to uh, involve in this the the Italian guidelines headed by the Ministry of Infrastructure and Transport uh, that are uh, that were were the list uh, this uh, this year. So we prepared these documents in a way that, uh, you know, we, we kind of uh, share the, the same uh, knowledge. 
Uh, and then, so going deeply to the classification, we work on the IFC bridge part. Um, so this means that we use the IFC element composition and to create different levels of uh, the composition of the spatial structure. This is an example of the first uh, complex level of the existing masonry bridge. And you can see that at first we uh, kind of uh, defined the part, uh, the IFC bridge part of the deck, the super structure and the substructure. Then going deeply in the in the um, and then the composition of the of the project, uh, we create we have the, the IFC bridge part, which is the element. And for example, for the substructure, we have the abutment, the pier, uh, or for example, for the superstructure, what we have, for example, is a user-defined uh, bridge part uh, named span. Uh, here an example of the of the of the schema that we use. Uh, and related to the uh, to the special structure, but then uh, we here we of course we will have then the, all the object contained in this uh, special uh, special structure. Um, then uh, completed for both the, the the bridges, the part of the of the stru structural of the special organization. Uh, what we've done is going deeply to the object classification. Uh, what uh, what's happened is that uh, we consider also in this case for each for for each of the element uh, we use uh, the the base our consideration of the use case of each model so we try to uh, to understand uh, as always uh, how the object uh, we will use and which properties and information uh, will put in this uh, in this object uh, and uh, of course uh, as always we use the, the definition uh, that are shared in the website so uh, basically, we, this were uh, an interactive operation of creating also uh, semantic relations between uh, the object, kind of the defining, it, this was a process of defining priorities, but uh, uh, trying to not to create a loop of overclassification, but it's really, it was a moment where we thought uh, on the really use of the um, of the object in the model of the entities, but in a logic that is IFC based. What I mean with an IFC logic? Of course, at first to identify and to classify the object, uh, at first we consider the definition of the classes. And then on a lower level, what level what you've done is considering the predefinite types and so the definition that uh, the predefinite type uh, uh, gives us. Uh, and so uh, in this, of course, uh, because it, it, is a, it is a bridge, uh, we have uh, that uh, we, um, we have different uh, type of objects that uh, were not considered. I mean, uh, of course, we have the, all the interface between the linear infra infrastructure that uh, passes uh, uh, above the, the bridges, I mean the rail or the street, uh, but uh, uh, as we, so we knew, we knew that uh, the, uh, the IFC rail project and the common uh, schema about the, the infrastructure uh, so it, we're, we're going on, so we kind of postponed this part to classify and to identify the linear infrastructure to a second phase. And uh, the second part that we didn't consider is the uh, classification of the um, equipment of the of the bridges. So we didn't consider in our classification these two types of uh, of object in the in the in the, in our IFC classification phase, and we postpone uh, this phase uh, to a second moment. Uh, so here an example 
of the, the uh, here an example of uh, the classification of uh, one of one when some elements are related to the uh, existing bridge. Of course, the, the, the approach and the classification between the two types of bridge were, uh, were, was different because uh, uh, the two types of bridges were really different. Uh, for example, in the in modeling and classifying the part of the, the, the existing bridge, uh, they, here we have a lot of uh, particular element, element, for example, the, the feeling of the, of the object, which is uh, really, really complex. Uh, we have uh, many types. Here you can see the diagram that we produce, a part of it, of course, related to, to the peers and that the peer abutment that we have in the in the bridge and uh, how we kind of divided it uh, into uh, into their uh, into the different parts and how we created this diagram connecting the different objects to the spatial structure uh, they are contained in uh, on the other side here we have an example of the girder bridge of course here we have an amount of uh, of element as i said all the steel elements inside uh, the project that are uh, that was really uh, co complex to to define them and to kind of creating also the correct relations between the object inside the inside the project itself because uh, there are uh, really an, a big amount of elements and so uh, but uh, i mean it was easier within then using this method to create the relations and but also to understand and kind of trying to to go uh, and to try to control the the, the phase of classification through through this then uh, the part of modeling which is, was really interesting an interesting part because uh, during this part uh, we have the opportunity to to use a new approach to towards the modeling uh, i mean we kind of in this phase uh, all the user uh, had had to avoid a specific software shortcut and uh, forcing the is this schema inside uh, the model. So the approach that we use uh, was different and uh, this was done because uh, we want to uh, highlight in a way uh, the problems but we want also to create an opportunity for the for the members of the work group to to develop a new approach towards the modeling and so starting in you know, a new way of uh, of thinking related to, to this part uh, of the of the modeling. Uh, so then uh, doing this part uh, of uh, so of create uh, the model, uh, we do we did um, IFC expert. Uh, I keep repeating this. We know that the software uh, doesn't don't support the, the standard the IFC 4.2. But uh, what we uh, took in consideration was that a uh, few new entities were added and so uh, we had the opportunity to, to use and to export the, 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 all the classes uh, except for really few of them. And then to to we have uh, we create process to customize the the export of the anum. So uh, thanks to this approach, we have the opportunity to do uh, some export of the of the model and to test uh, and uh, check, uh, for example, the relations between the, the components. So kind of uh, checking all of the uh, all of the format uh, that uh, IFC support. So we we, we check uh, the relations between them. And then, for example, we work on the geometry uh, issues related to the geometry. And then uh, another important thing is that we force all the software that we use towards a correct IFC mapping. This means that we want a correct uh, IFC uh, classification of the object in the export uh, 
although we know the, the, the software don't support the, the standard IFC 4.2. Um, to add a consideration in the uh, to add a consideration in the um, in the first uh, uh, bridge, which is the existing masonry arch bridge, uh, we work on the um, on the as I said uh, we work on the condition of the asset. So uh, we work uh, we analyze the piece set conditions of the opportunity to add a set of properties to the element that uh, can describe the condition of the asset in a specific moment and give kind of a range or a scale of um of condition to it. Uh, we know that this is not enough to, to describe the, the condition of the, of, the, of the asset, but uh, this was an opportunity between the members of the group work group to share uh, best practice that they normally use uh, in the common praxis. For example, uh, um, the University of Padua, so my university, we are developing some some uh, experiences and project to, to describe this part and also so we shared this so we discussed with this with the other company uh, components of the work group that are professionals and so we have this exchange of information and the best practices that we normally use and then we are going towards the last part of the of the presentation and which is the uh, the some explanation of the issues that we uh, was found during this process uh, so we kind of listed uh, during the phase of modeling and classification of uh, the IFC object uh, we can kind of write this and we use uh, this approach to document our uh, so to document these issues so we create a table uh, and uh, which uh, and we describe kind of a code for each uh, problem that is about uh, the uh, the bridge they are referred to, so if it is the first bridge or the second one, and then a code to identify the number of issue, then we put an image uh, to easily understand uh, the object we are referring to. And then we describe uh, uh, briefly the problem. And then we try to give the solution, but also that alter the alternatives that we consider in this process. So, uh, of course, for each problem, there are some alternatives. And uh, if we found a solution, we describe uh, both of them. So, uh, because of the differences between the problems that we have uh, highlighted, we choose to organize them in, uh, let's say, uh, three parts. Uh, the first types of, um, of issues are related to the IFC classification. This means that they are related to, for example, definition that are missed, or classes that we don't find, or predefinite types that uh, are not uh, that don't uh, fit uh, with a specific uh, uh, occurrences of our objects. Then uh, we we want we are, we we highlighted also a uh, modeling issue, so they are related to the software. But uh, as I said before, it's not important comparing the software. But uh, for us, it was really interesting find that some problems are in common between different softwares. And then finally, there are other types of issues which are related to the IFC instead. For example, uh, geometry uh, export uh, or uh, relations type of, uh, of, of problem. But this type of, uh, of objects are not strictly connected to the classification uh, itself. So now I'm going to, to show you uh, some of these uh, issues that we we found, and but the others, of course, are all in the document uh, presented. So the first, for example, that all of the members uh, shared. So it was the problem that in the in the special structure organization, uh, we don't have any predefinite type to identify the span. 
So uh, in the IFC bridge part, uh, the, it is uh, missed uh, the idianum uh, span, and uh, we think that it, this is really necessary to identify uh, part of the bridge because normally the the owner, the client. So this is the first uh, um, the first uh, terms used uh, to term used to identify uh, the where some objects are contained in uh, and also the database that normally the, the owners use or the clients use uh, start from the organization and the, on the description of the bridge in spans. Another example, uh, different always based on the IFC classification, is related to the vault. Uh, I can imagine that uh, uh, all the people that are listening that work with that work with uh, existing assets, uh, and if uh, especially if they work with the masonry, uh, there is always a problem to classify the vault in IFC. The class, a specific class with specific description properties, are missed is missed. So uh, we it, and in the bridge, it's it's a bigger problem than on the buildings because uh, the functionality of the vault on the masonry it's really uh, it's really important so we have the, we had found uh, three different alternatives for describing and for classifying the uh, the vaults and we are suggesting uh, one of them then another example of uh, uh, an issue related to the IFC classification is the one related to the pedestal, because, uh, for example, uh, the, we have an example of the of the second bridge or the pedestal of the second bridge. Uh, that uh, uh, the geometry of this element it's not uh, clear so uh, we find difficult to describe it as a column or as a beam because of its geometry shape but uh, uh, so for example the solution we propose is to to categorize it as a, an IFC member and uh, uh, create a user-defined type uh, uh, named uh, pedestal and then, for example, examples of uh, modeling issues. So, uh, of course, they depend on the software we are uh, we are using. But uh, um, so some of them are in common. For example, uh, the the modeling, the export of the the bearing, which is a, a complex element defined by the different uh, by a number of different elements. Uh, so his it's uh, uh, it's export. It's uh, really com dif difficult. So there are problems to do this. Or for example, there are some uh, geometry problems related to uh, when we export them related to the uh, geometry of uh, no linear um, linear surfaces and uh, and elements then uh, related to the third type type of issues uh, an interesting one is the use of the IFC element assembly uh, we know that in the IFC project, a lot of the entities and a lot of predefined types uh, were added in this class. But actually, when we model and when we, we, we are modeling a bridge and this element, normally it's, it's really, really lately, this is used in the, uh, in the classification. And normally, uh, in the, the software, this element assembly is not used. So then we have problem in the export. So this was a really critical uh, approach we, we, we have towards toward this and uh, so how this can be used better to to explain because really some lot of uh, of uh, entities are in this uh, in this uh, in this class and another uh, issues about uh, issues and problems uh, we encounter is to uh, kind of uh, defined and uh, uh, describe the element aggregation inside the software uh, I mean uh, these relations it's uh, it is easy to to represent it for some of um, 
for some elements or for some uh, entities, but in other cases, although IFC uh, allows us to, to use this, and uh, I mean, uh, in theory, this relations is possible, but when describing it and creating this type of relations that the software, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it is really uh, complicated uh, for, for us. And then uh, going uh, to to the end of this of this presentation, uh, what are the the next steps of our work group? At first, as I mentioned before, uh, we want to kind of. Uh, test so test the, the the new standards and try to to apply the new candidate standard 4.3 in, in our in our work so in the model the two bridge model that we've done uh, basically so to add and to to renew the special so the special structure and then as i said we want to work on the alignment and on the linear placement of the of the of the element uh, uh, and related so create the relations and to describe the relation with the linear in infrastructure uh, and then uh, of course we are working more with the two bridge with the two bridge types uh, i mean this first part of the uh, related to the new standard is for both but then we want to go deeper in the two uh, in the work of the two uh, of the two case studies and for example for the existing mastery bridge uh, what we want to know is uh, working also on the reinforcement that are um, that there are so in the in the bridge itself and then uh, kind of creating the relations between here we said jams and ifc and this means so create uh, and to Associate, associating the IFC classes with the database that are used and of uh, so databases that normally uh, we use for describing bridges and that owners or uh, the so the professionals normally use to describe this and then for the other type of uh, of bridge for the slab Girton one uh, what we want to do is working on the structural domain so uh, kind of keep going and testing the application of this and working more on the um, on the property set also uh, related to to this so um, thank you for your attention and uh, now if uh, there are some questions um, so yeah. we are delighted to answer thank you Raquel. Uh, just uh, for the rest of the audience also remember the two ways you have right now to make questions is either uh, using the chat or uh, uh, raising your hand During actually the presentation itself, uh, uh, a few questions were asked and uh, I answered. Can you confirm me that uh, you can see them? Just uh, I'll make also the recap to the questions that uh, were asked. Uh, one was uh, related to uh, elements being deprecated in uh, four point three, and uh, we were uh, we are aware of it, and uh, we will adapt this work, as Raquel said, in the future to four point three. Uh, there was an important question related to the representation of alignment and it being under IFC project directly or being contained in other elements of the special structure. Uh, honestly, alignment was out of scope for this uh, work and probably this discussion deserves a specific, um, a specific uh, attention. 
Um, also, there are questions related to the standardization process itself. I'm seeing another question right now related to the release of 4.2, probably it's related to 4.3. Uh, basically, if you go on the website, on the technical the website of Building Smart, so technical.buildingsmart.org, you will find the, the uh, new version, 4.3, already being released, so it's, uh, it's public. Um, I'll uh, give you in the chat uh, the, the link. Uh, also, the questions were related to the difference between uh, a candidate standard and the final one. And to answer that question, we pointed to some, a public website of Building Smart International. And we want to point out that there are within the international community two projects being initiated uh, really these days, uh, which are one within the infrastructure room, which is called the deployment project, and another one within the rail room, which is called IFC Rail Phase 2. The objective of which are really to uh, carry out the activities to bring the standard from candidate to final. And uh, to do that, they need to demonstrate some software validation and the consensus from a broad, broad, uh, broad com community. Um, we have... Um, uh, Raquel, a question for you. Uh, the yeah. question is the following. How the model has been classified with the aim of mapping the state of degradation? So, uh, in this part, so as uh, I show, it's possible to uh, to use so based on the IFC consideration, it is possible just to add some um, some property set related to the uh, so to the element itself but uh, because this is not enough what you we've done is kind of sharing uh, the best practice that we've done uh, for example uh, using the using semi-automatic procedure to map and to create objects inside the uh, the model, for example, and uh, to to create uh, the link and uh, the aggregation between uh, kind of, for example, creating a new object related to the decay and to the degradation uh, to the object itself. So, but it's not, uh, let's say, it's not uh, the IFC, it's not what IFC propone, it's just what uh, the practice that, for example, uh, as, as the University of Padua, we are using and we are proposing, and it's this, so to create an object, for example, for the decay and then to map it. But of course, based on the IFC, uh, what you can do is kind of creating this, uh, applying this property set to the object itself. All right, we are waiting to see if more questions come out. Okay, the, um, the question is uh, uh, related uh, to in the next phase uh, will be if we will also include some tests with international available classification systems like omni-class, uni-class, and uh, so forth. Uh, honestly, this is not in the scope of, of uh, this um, current phase. Uh, this doesn't mean that it will be excluded from further phases. 
because anyway the uh, semantics of classification systems, the semantics of data dictionary that might be either international, national, at project level or sector level, those uh, are uh, relevant uh, to the whole community. So, yes, thank exactly. You. But, yeah, Xenia, I just want to add to this consideration is that uh, the opportunities of this working group is that, uh, of course, we work on uh, on just, I mean, on the IFC classification and on specific topic. But thanks for the thanks of the meeting that we've done, and we have to, the opportunity to talk about a lot of other different things that are not here proposed. And but, I mean, we have the opportunity to to share this uh, knowledge. And as uh, for the the part of the uh, conditions of the description of the condition of the asset, which are kind of a sharing of um, of practices between uh, the universities and uh, the, uh, the clients, all the members of the group. Uh, also for this part of uh, the classification, international classification, uh, we are working on it and we have the, the opportunities to share the, the, the work that uh, uh, as uh, our, so um, that normally during our research we are doing. So um, actually uh, we are working on it, but uh, as Sene said, it's not of the on the main scope of our work group. Raquel, another question is uh, related, is there a, to the publication of the work? Is there any publication about your work? Uh, no, we are kind of. This is uh, so the, the the publication of this uh, of this work uh, will be done in the next month. Uh, we are preparing all the documents and so preparing uh, uh, to 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 publish all of this uh, work that will be available, of course, in the next few months. Right. This is the first time that actually the work has been consolidated and exposed to the public. <laughs> and in this uh, current phase that will go from now till October, we have a whole communication plan, which uh, uh, includes uh, the release of uh, public documents and also scientific publications. <clears throat> okay, uh, one question is uh, related to the um, integration between the BIM word and the GIS word. Do you use any BIM and GIS integration methodology or technology to visualize, simulate and coordinate on the project from design to construction? For example, um, sites for integration and interoperability with other formats such as CTGML, land infra, etc. No, in this uh, first part, no, uh, we didn't. Uh, we didn't use uh, the part of the GIS information, but uh, we are discussing if it's possible to add this part in the second uh, second phase. Uh, but in this, so in the first part, uh, no, no, so uh, this wasn't done. <laughs> of course, they thank you for the um, answer. Um, Stefan is also providing feedback about alignment that cannot be under IFC project. I think he refers to a, a picture of yours. Uh, Which one? He's uh, uh. just pointing out that uh, um, there is a picture within the IFC documentation that the uh, forbids the presence of alignment on their project. But I think that again, okay. this deserves a whole different uh, um, exchange of ideas. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Stefan, for the for the 
for the pig, for the feedback. <laughs> Okay, another question. How did you measure the masonry bridge? In which sense? Probably I didn't understand. How did you measure? It's probably related to uh, the capturing of the... Okay. I don't know, uh, this question came from um, Giambito Cacciatore. Do you want to explain further your question, please? Or uh, I can uh, give you the right to talk. if you want, you are unmuted. I don't know if he, if he is referring to the survey, probably of the of the Masary Arch Bridge. If it's, uh, I don't know uh, if they probably means so measurements. So it. It means he means uh, so how we we obtain all the information, and uh, actually the the owners. Uh, if this is the question, the owners um, uh, the owner give us gives us uh, the all the the documents. So they shared kind of two uh, D documentation and that they have done, uh, and so basically because so trying to uh, yeah. to hide. Uh, this uh, this part of um, so we actually we don't know how they they did this because you know because of the privacy and so on actually uh, we have uh, uh, some lack of information about this uh, this part for example the the first part of survey related to to the bridge so what we we have uh, uh, were just documents and uh, 2D files uh, for the, the modeling of this. So actually, we, we didn't have any point clouds, for example. Uh, we just used 2D elements, so 2D documentation. But I don't know if this was the, the question. Another probably question that is related to your answer, Raquel, is did you capture the bridge with a laser scanner, photogrammetry, or a combination? Uh, no, uh, we, we, we didn't uh, ask for, so we didn't have any point uh, for point cloud for, for this, uh, although so um, normally we use it, uh, but for in this specific case, we just work on the to uh, the documentation and which is actually where this was I mean an opportunity because uh, a lot of uh, so most of the situation and we don't have the, the possibility to to do the the point uh, the, the survey at first so actually for this case we didn't have it so just to the documentations but uh, uh, yeah so was it for this case? Although, of course, it uh, it will it will be <laughs> really interesting. Uh, keep working also for this case with pond cloud and, of course, other types of uh, um, 
survey, inside survey, of course, because we could have the opportunity to test other practices and other uh, tests of the, also the IFC in this, in this part, so working with the point cloud, uh, kind of creating, uh, in, thanks to the IFC, some connection between them and so describing the information exchange, but it wasn't possible in this case. Okay, your answer also provides an answer to jump me to the previous one. I don't see any other question for the time being. Well, uh, anyway, while uh, potentially waiting for other questions, again, I would like to thank to thank everybody who joined this webinar. And of course, specifically the people who work on the production of this content, so RFI, ANAS, Lombardi, ATS, University of Padova, University of Napoli, of Naples, Sistema, and CSP FEA and uh, Minucci, Minucci Associati. Uh, again, the material that has already been uploaded within uh, GoToWebinar and the registration of the recording of the of the webinar will be provided to whoever registered uh, today. And with this, I think uh, I say bye to everybody. Thanks again for joining us, especially in this period that is uh, kind of difficult for all of us. Uh, of course, our I didn't say that that our first intention was actually to come, uh, of course, uh, to the um, the summit of Building Smart International in Norway to to show the this work. And uh, of course, we didn't get uh, the the occasion. Um, in any case, we will join uh, the online sessions of Building Smart International Summit that uh, will be held in the month of uh, May. Um, and uh, nothing. looking uh, clearly forward to continuing this work and accepting and uh, exchanging uh, with the international community on uh, inputs, ideas and uh, discussions. And uh, with that, I would stop the webinar. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.